Hello and welcome to part five of this Tableau Made Easy series. In the last video, we took a look over both the dimension and measure roles that are assigned to each of our variables. And we also had a bit of a play around with the different widgets in the marks card. In this tutorial, I wanna discuss the first of these last two areas up here, and that will be filters. And like I mentioned at the end of the last tutorial, we are actually gonna use both the filters here and then the pages up above it to add some amazing functionality to our map. So let's start right here with what is known as the filters shelf. Now the filters shelf allows us or indeed the viewer or user of our dashboard to specify or toggle what data to include and or exclude in the visualization. For example, on our map here, we currently have all earthquakes from our data set. But what if we or the user wanted to narrow that down so we or they were only viewing a subset of earthquakes that had a magnitude higher than, I don't know, let's say higher than 50. That could be really useful for the user as it would allow them to dive into the data and get to certain insights that they need or want. Perhaps instead they want to filter by location so they want to only show earthquakes that took place in Alaska, for example. The filters shelf is where we can add all of this amazing functionality. So let's do exactly that now. And as you've come to expect, Tableau makes this all quite intuitive and allows a lot of customization as we go. So to get started with this, let's go over to the left hand side with our variables and we are going to drag our magnitude variable up onto our filter shelf and we're gonna drop it there. Now, when we do this, because this magnitude variable is a measure, we get this pop-up that allows us to specify exactly how we'd like this all to work. And we have a whole lot of options available to us if we need to do something fancy. In the vast majority of cases, however, you're just gonna want to stick with the default setting of all values, which you can see in bold therein, which means that it will just use the magnitude values as they are, rather than aggregating them up in any way. So let's just hit next. And then in this next pop-up, we can set how we want our filter to operate. So the default, as you can see, is range of values. And this essentially means that we or the user will have a two-ended slider to toggle, and this will specify which earthquakes should be shown or included in the visualization. We also have the option to have one-ended sliders using at least or at most, but for now, we're just gonna stick with range of values. The other option we have is down here where we can specify if we want everything to be included to start with. And in most cases, this is what you'll probably want to do, but we do have the option to essentially preset our filter to start with. So say only earthquakes with magnitudes between 25 and 75, for example. Again, let's just leave this all as it is with all data points being present. So let's go ahead and click apply and then okay. Next, let's head up to the filters shelf here and click on the drop down on the magnitude variable and then let's click show filter. And when we do, we see that filter appear over on the right of screen. So let's have a bit of a play around with it. We can drag the bottom end of this slider up to say 50. Let's do this here and then if we let that go, now our chart is only showing the earthquakes with a magnitude above 50. And you can see that Tableau automatically centers our map on screen to give the best coverage of this new subset of earthquakes. Let's bring that back down to the bottom. And instead, let's now filter for earthquakes with a magnitude less than 50. And what is interesting is that it is done just that. We are indeed seeing only the smaller magnitude earthquakes, but it's done something that I probably wouldn't want it to do. It has adjusted the color spectrum and the size spectrum for our data points to now be based on the minimum and maximum values of the filtered subset. Now, I'm sure there are times where this is exactly what you want, but I want to show you how you can lock the values so the filter will be applied, but our data point colors and sizes will stay locked to what they were originally. So let's reset our filter by just dragging the upper slider all the way back to the top. And then to lock the colors, let's go down to our color legend here, which is just below our filter and click the drop down arrow. 
Then let's click Edit Colors. In there, let's click the Advanced button. And then let's click into the Start, the End, and the Center checkboxes there. And then let's hit Apply and OK. Let's do the same for our data point size. So again, let's go over to the size legend here and click the drop down. And this time let's click edit sizes. And here, let's click the start value in legend checkbox and the end value for range checkbox. Just like before, let's click apply and okay. And now we've done both of those things, let's try our filter again. So let's bring our top slider down to around about 50. And now we can see the sizes and colors have stayed true to the original spectrums, which I like a bit more in this case. But like I say, this would be completely dependent on what you were doing. There would be no shortage of situations where you would indeed want the spectrum bounds to be dynamically updated. Cool, so that is our filter by magnitude, which was a measure. Let's add another filter using a dimension variable to see what options we have there. So just like last time, let's drag the variable of choice over onto the filter shelf. And this time let's use location. So let's drag that over and drop that under magnitude there. And again, when we do that, we are met with a pop-up box allowing us to specify exactly how we want this filter to operate. In this particular case, we could pre-filter the data by selecting only certain locations. But for now, I don't want to do that. I want all locations to be available to start with. So let's go over and check the use all box. We could also just click all here. And then just like before, let's click apply and OK. Back up in our filters shelf, let's click the drop down on location and again show filter. And when we do that, as you can see over on the right of screen, we now have a list of checkboxes that a user could check or uncheck depending on what they wanted to view. So for example, we could uncheck Alaska here. And when we do that, those earthquakes disappear from our map. Conversely, we could deselect all locations by clicking the all button here twice, and then we could select only Alaska, and it would show us just those. We could select multiple locations. So let's add in Canada as well, as obviously that is right next door to Alaska. And those are now added in as well. And you can again see Tableau being really clever and readjusting the map to encompass the data points that we've selected. So that is a nice and easy but powerful filter we can add. The only thing I'd want to change is somewhat aesthetic as I don't really like how much space this filter is taking up with all of those checkboxes down the right hand side. So if we go up to the top right of our filter and we click the drop down here, we can change the type. So instead of multiple values list like has been selected by default, let's change it to multiple values drop down. And for me, that looks a lot better. Now, if we click into this filter here, we essentially have the same options, but it's just stored in a much more compact way. So a lot of power in those filters and also a lot of flexibility. Obviously, we've just scratched the surface here, but it should give you a nice overview of what can be done. We will be using filters more as we move further into this section on Tableau, and they will also feature in our final dashboard. So good to start feeling comfortable with them here. Anyway, let's just reset the filters so we return to our full map. In other words, all of our data is present. So let's move magnitude right back up as well. And then let's leave it there for now. Let's remember to save our workbook. So let's go up to File and Save to Tableau Public. We're just going to overwrite the current version of our DSi Earthquake Dashboard Workbook or whatever you have called yours. So I'm going to click Save and Overwrite Yes. And there we go. And again, here we are, we've been prompted with the online version and we or anyone who has the link for this can play around with it, including using those amazing filters that we just added. Very, very cool. Now in the next video, we are going to discuss and play with the last remaining shelf up the top. And that is of course the pages shelf. You won't always need this functionality for your dashboards, but when put into action, it can be extremely powerful as it gives your visualization a whole extra dimension. This is going to be fantastic to learn about. Well done with the filters here and I will see you in the next video.